Ode to a Nightingale by John Keats. My heart aches and a drowsy numbness pains my sense as though of hemlock I had drunk or emptied some dull opiate that drains one minute past and leafy woods had sunk. Tis not through envy of thy happy lot but being too happy in thine happiness that thou, light-winged dryad of the trees in some melodious plot of beech and green and shadows numberless, singest of summer in full-throated ease. Oh, for a draught of vintage that hath been cooled a long age in the deep delved earth tasting of flora and the country green, dance and Provencal song and sunburnt mirth. Oh, for a beaker full of the warm south, full of the true, the blushful hippocrene, with beaded bubbles winking at the brim and purple stain at mouth, that I might drink and leave the world unseen and with thee fade away into the forest dim, fade far away, dissolve, and quite forget what thou among the leaves hast never known, the weariness, the fever, and the fret, here, where men sit and hear each other groan, where palsy shakes a few sad last grey hairs, where youth grows pale and specked thin and dies, where but to think is to be full of sorrow and leaden-eyed despairs, where beauty cannot keep her lustrous eyes, nor new love pine at them beyond tomorrow. Away, away, for I will fly to thee not charioted by Bacchus and his pards, but on the viewless wings of poesy, though the dull brain perplexes and retards. Already with thee, tender is the night, and haply the queen moon is on her throne, clustered around by all her starry fays. But here there is no light, save what from heaven is with the breezes blown through verdurous glooms and winding mossy ways. I cannot see what flowers are at my feet, nor what soft incense hangs upon the boughs, but in embalmed darkness guess each sweet wherewith the seasonable month endows the grass, the thicket, and the fruit tree wild, white hawthorn, and the pastoral eglantine, fast fading violets covered up in leaves, and mid May's eldest child, the coming musk rose, full of dewy wine, the murmurous haunt of flies on summer eaves. Darkling, I listen, and for many a time I have been half in love with easeful death, called him soft names in many a music rhyme, to take into the air my quiet breath. Now more than ever seems it rich to die, to cease upon the midnight with no pain, while thou art pouring forth thy soul abroad in such an ecstasy. Still wouldst thou sing, and I have ears in vain. To thy high requiem become a sod. Thou wast not born for death, immortal bird. No hungry generations tread thee down. The voice I hear this passing night was heard in ancient times by emperor and clown. Perhaps the self-same song that found a path through the sad heart of Ruth 
when sick for home, she stood in tears amid the alien corn. The same that oft times hath charmed magic casements, opening on the foam of perilous seas in fairy lands forlorn. Forlorn. The very word is like a bell to toll me back from thee to my soul self. Adieu. The fancy cannot cheat so well as she is fain to do, deceiving elf. Adieu. Adieu. Thy plaintive anthem fades past the near meadows, over the still stream, up the hillside, and now tis buried deep in the next valley glade. Was it a vision or a waking dream? Fled is that music. Do I wake or sleep? Um, I apologize for choosing such a long poem. I hope some of you stayed until the end. It's so iconic, isn't it? So sensual. Um, I remembered it actually because at the height of the pandemic, being locked inside my home in London, whenever I go out, I can hear the birds singing so loudly, so beautifully, and it's what Keats is describing, isn't it? There we are now.